The fundamental theorem of algebra states that every non-constant single variable polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one complex root. This includes polynomials with real coefficients, since every real number is a complex number with an imaginary part equal to zero. Equivalently, by definition, the theorem states that the field of complex numbers is algebraically closed. The theorem is also stated as follows, every non-zero, single variable, degree n polynomial with complex coefficients has, counted with multiplicity, exactly n complex roots. The equivalence of the two statements can be proven through the use of successive polynomial division. In spite of its name, there is no purely algebraic proof of the theorem, since any proof must use some form of completeness, which is not an algebraic concept. Additionally, it is not fundamental for modern algebra, its name was given at a time when algebra was synonymous with theory of equations. Topic. History Peter Roth, in his book Arithmetica Philosophica published in 1608, at Nürnberg, by Johann Lanzenberger, wrote that a polynomial equation of degree n with real coefficients may have n solutions. Albert Girard, in his book L'Invention Nouvelle en l'Algebra, published in 1629, asserted that a polynomial equation of degree n has n solutions, but he did not state that they had to be real numbers. Furthermore, he added that his assertion holds, unless the equation is incomplete, by which he meant that no coefficient is equal to zero. However, when he explains in detail what he means, it is clear that he actually believes that his assertion is always true. For instance, he shows that the equation x 4 equals 4 x minus 3 Display style x caret 4 equals 4 by minus 3. Although incomplete, has four solutions, counting multiplicities: 1 twice, minus 1 plus i 2. Display style minus 1 plus i sqrt 2 and Minus one minus i two display style one i sqrt two. As will be mentioned again below, it follows from the fundamental theorem of algebra that every non-constant polynomial with real coefficients can be written as a product of polynomials with real coefficients whose degree are either one or two. However, in 1702 Leibniz said that no polynomial of the type x4 plus a4 with a real and distinct from zero can be written in such a way. Later, Nicolaus Bernoulli made the same assertion concerning the polynomial x4 minus 4 by 3 plus 2 by 2 plus 4 x plus 4, but he got a letter from Euler in 1742 in which he was told that his polynomial happened to be equal to x2 minus 2 plus alpha x plus 1 plus 7 plus alpha x 2 minus 2 minus alpha x plus 1 plus 7 minus alpha alpha 
equals four plus two seven Display style left x caret two two plus alpha x plus one plus sqrt seven plus alpha right left x caret two two alpha x plus one plus sqrt seven alpha right q quad alpha equals sqrt four plus two sqrt seven also, Euler mentioned that x four plus a four equals x two plus a two x plus a two x Two minus a two x plus a two. Display style x caret four plus a caret four equals left x caret two plus a sqrt two c d o t x plus a caret two right left x caret two a sqrt two c d o t x plus a caret two right. A first attempt at proving the theorem was made by D'Alembert in 1746, but his proof was incomplete. Among other problems, it assumed implicitly a theorem now known as Pugh's theorem which would not be proved until more than a century later, and furthermore the proof assumed the fundamental theorem of algebra. Other attempts were made by Euler (1749), De Fontenex (1759), Lagrange (1772), and Laplace (1795). These last four attempts assumed implicitly Girard's assertion. To be more precise, the existence of solutions was assumed, and all that remained to be proved was that their form was a plus by for some real numbers a and b. In modern terms, Euler, de Fontenex, Lagrange, and Laplace were assuming the existence of a splitting field of the polynomial P -Z. At the end of the 18th century, two new proofs were published which did not assume the existence of roots, but neither of which was complete. One of them, due to James Wood and mainly algebraic, was published in 1798 and it was totally ignored. Wood's proof had an algebraic gap. The other one was published by Gauss in 1799 and it was mainly geometric, but it had a topological gap, filled by Alexander Ostrovsky in 1920, as discussed in Smale 1981 3, Smale writes. I wish to point out what an immense gap Gauss proof contained. It is a subtle point even today that a real algebraic plane curve cannot enter a disk without leaving. In fact even though Gauss redid this proof fifty years later, the gap remained. It was not until 1920 that Gauss proof was completed. In the reference Gauss, A. Ostrovsky has a paper which does this and gives an excellent discussion of the problem as well. A rigorous proof was first published by Argand in 1806 and revisited in 1813. It was here that, for the first time, the fundamental theorem of algebra was stated for polynomials with complex coefficients, rather than just real coefficients. Gauss produced two other proofs in 1816 and another version of his original proof in 1849. The first textbook containing a proof of the theorem was Cauchy's Cours d'analyse de l'école royale polytechnique 1821. It contained Argand's proof, although Argand is not credited for it. None of the proofs mentioned so far is constructive. 
It was Weierstrass who raised for the first time, in the middle of the 19th century, the problem of finding a constructive proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. He presented his solution, that amounts in modern terms to a combination of the durand kerner method with the homotopy continuation principle, in 1891. Another proof of this kind was obtained by Helmuth Nesser in 1940 and simplified by his son Martin Nesser in 1981. Without using countable choice, it is not possible to constructively prove the fundamental theorem of algebra for complex numbers based on the Dedekind real numbers which are not constructively equivalent to the Cauchy real numbers without countable choice. However, Fred Richman proved a reformulated version of the theorem that does work. Topic proofs All proofs below involve some analysis, or at least the topological concept of continuity of real or complex functions. Some also use differentiable or even analytic functions. This fact has led to the remark that the fundamental theorem of algebra is neither fundamental, nor a theorem of algebra. Some proofs of the theorem only prove that any non constant polynomial with real coefficients has some complex root. This is enough to establish the theorem in the general case because, given a non constant polynomial P Z with complex coefficients, the polynomial Q Z equals P Z P Z displaystyle Q Z equals P Z overline P overline Z has only real coefficients and, if Z is a zero of Q Z, then either Z or its conjugate is a root of P. Z. A large number of non-algebraic proofs of the theorem use the fact sometimes called growth lemma that an nth degree polynomial function P Z whose dominant coefficient is 1 behaves like Z n when Z is large enough. A more precise statement is, there is some positive real number R such that, 1 2, Z n, P, Z, 3 2, Z n, display style tfrac 1 2, Z caret n, when, Z, greater than R. Topic. Complex analytic proofs Find a closed disk D of radius R centered at the origin such that P Z greater than P zero whenever Z R. The minimum of P Z on D, which must exist since D is compact, is therefore achieved at some point Z zero in the interior of D, but not at any point of its boundary. The maximum modulus principle applied to 1, p, z implies then that p, z0 equals 0. In other words, z0 is a 0 of p, z. A variation of this proof does not require the use of the maximum modulus principle in fact, the same argument with minor changes also gives a proof of the maximum modulus principle for holomorphic functions. If we assume by contradiction that it equals p z zero does not equal zero, then expanding p z in powers of z minus z zero, we can write p z equals a plus c k z minus Z zero K plus C K plus one Z minus Z zero K plus one plus plus c n z minus z 0 n 
display style p z equals a plus c underscore k z z underscore zero caret k plus c underscore k plus one z z underscore zero caret k plus one plus c d o t s plus c underscore n z z underscore zero caret n here, the cj are simply the coefficients of the polynomial zp z plus z0, and we let k be the index of the first coefficient following the constant term that is non-zero. But now we see that for z sufficiently close to z0 this has behavior asymptotically similar to the simpler polynomial q z equals plus c k z minus z 0 k display style q z equals a plus c underscore k z z underscore 0 caret k in the sense that as is easy to check the function p Z minus Q Z Z minus Z zero K plus one Display style left FRAC P Z Q Z Z Z underscore zero carrot K plus one right is bounded by some positive constant M in some neighborhood of Z zero. Therefore if we define theta zero equals arg a plus Pi minus arg c k k display style theta underscore zero equals arg a plus pi arg c underscore k k and let z equals z zero plus R E I theta zero display style Z equals Z underscore zero plus re carrot I theta underscore zero then for any sufficiently small positive number r so that the bound M mentioned above holds, using the triangle inequality we see that P Z Q Z plus R K plus one P Z minus Q Z R K plus one a plus minus one C K R K E I Arg a minus Arg C K plus m r k plus 1 equals a minus c k r k Plus M R K plus one display style begin aligned P Z and L E Q Q Z 
plus r caret k plus one left frac p z q z r caret k plus one right four p t and l e q left a plus minus one c underscore k r caret k e caret i arg a arg c underscore k right plus m r caret k plus one four p t and equals a c underscore k r caret k plus m r caret k plus one end aligned when r is sufficiently close to zero this upper bound for p z is strictly smaller than a in contradiction to the definition of z zero geometrically we have found an explicit direction theta zero such that if one approaches z zero from from that direction one can obtain values p z smaller in absolute value than p z zero another analytic proof can be obtained along this line of thought observing that since p z greater than p zero outside d the minimum of p z on the whole complex plane is achieved at z zero if p z zero greater than zero, then one p is a bounded holomorphic function in the entire complex plane. Since for each complex number z one p z one p z zero, applying Liouville's theorem, which states that a bounded entire function must be constant, this would imply that one p is constant, and therefore that p is constant. This gives a contradiction, and hence p z zero equals zero. Yet another analytic proof uses the argument principle. Let R be a positive real number large enough so that every root of p z has absolute value smaller than R. Such a number must exist because every non-constant polynomial function of degree n has at most n zeros. For each r greater than r, consider the number 1 2 pi i c r p z p z d z display style frac 1 2 pi i int underscore c r frac p z p z d z where c r is the circle centered at zero with radius r oriented counterclockwise. Then the argument principle says that this number is the number n of zeros of p z in the open ball centered at zero with radius r, which, since r greater than r, is the total number of zeros of p z. On the other hand, the integral of n z along c r divided by 2 pi i is equal to n. But the difference between the two numbers is 1 2 pi I C R P Z P Z minus N Z D Z equals one two Pi I C R Z P Z minus N P Z Z P Z D Z Display style FRAC one two Pi I int underscore C R left FRAC P Z P Z FRAC N Z right D Z equals FRAC one two Pi I int underscore C R FRAC Z P Z N P Z Z P Z D Z the numerator of the rational expression being integrated has degree at most n1 and the degree of the denominator is n plus 1. Therefore, the number above tends to 0 as r plus infinity. But the number is also equal to n minus n and so n equals n. 
Still another complex analytic proof can be given by combining linear algebra with the Cauchy theorem. To establish that every complex polynomial of degree n greater than zero has a zero, it suffices to show that every complex square matrix of size n greater than zero has a complex eigenvalue. The proof of the latter statement is by contradiction. Let A be a complex square matrix of size n greater than zero and let in be the unit matrix of the same size. Assume A has no eigenvalues. Consider the resolvent function R Z equals Z I N minus A minus one Display style R Z equals Z underscore N A carrot minus one which is a meromorphic function on the complex plane with values in the vector space of matrices. The eigenvalues of A are precisely the poles of R Z. Since, by assumption, A has no eigenvalues, the function R Z is an entire function and Cauchy theorem implies that C R R Z D Z equals zero. Display style int underscore C R R Z D Z equals zero. On the other hand, R Z expanded as a geometric series gives R Z equals Z minus one I N minus Z minus one A minus one equals Z minus one K equals zero infinity one Z K A K Display style R Z equals Z carrot minus one I underscore N Z carrot minus one a carrot minus one equals Z carrot minus one sum underscore K equals zero carrot in a T F R A C one Z carrot K A carrot K C D O T This formula is valid outside the closed disk of radius a Display style a the operator norm of a let r greater than a display style r greater than a then c r r z d z equals K equals zero infinity C R D Z Z K plus one A K equals two Pi I I N Display style int underscore C R R Z D Z equals sum underscore K equals zero carrot in a T int underscore C R F R A C D Z Z carrot K plus one a carrot K equals two Pi E underscore N in which only the summoned k equals zero has a non-zero integral. 
This is a contradiction, and so A has an eigenvalue. Finally, Ruchet's theorem gives perhaps the shortest proof of the theorem. Topic topological proofs Suppose the minimum of P Z on the whole complex plane is achieved at Z0, it was seen at the proof which uses Liouville's theorem that such a number must exist. We can write P Z as a polynomial in Z minus Z0, there is some natural number K and there are some complex numbers CK, CK plus 1, CN such that CK does not equal 0 and P Z equals P Z0 plus CK Z minus Z0, K plus CK plus 1, Z minus Z0, K plus 1 plus plus CN Z Z minus Z zero N display style P Z equals P Z underscore zero plus C underscore K Z Z underscore zero carrot K plus C underscore K plus one Z Z underscore zero carrot K plus one plus C D O T S plus C underscore N Z Z underscore zero carrot N if P Z zero is non zero it follows that if A is a kth root of minus P Z0, CK and if T is positive and sufficiently small, then P Z0 plus Ta, for another topological proof by contradiction, suppose that the polynomial P Z has no roots, and consequently is never equal to zero. Think of the polynomial as a map from the complex plane into the complex plane. It maps any circle, Z. Topic R into a closed loop, a curve P R. We will consider what happens to the winding number of P R at the extremes when R is very large and when R 0. When R is a sufficiently large number, then the leading term Zn of P Z dominates all other terms combined, in other words, Z n greater than A n minus 1 Z n minus 1 plus plus a 0 display style left z caret n right greater than left a underscore n1 z caret n1 plus c d o t s plus a underscore 0 right when z traverses the circle r e i Theta display style re caret i theta once counterclockwise zero theta two pi display style zero leq theta leq two pi then z n equals r E I N theta display style z caret n equals re caret in theta wins n times counterclockwise zero theta two pi n Display style zero leq theta leq two pi n around the origin zero zero and p r likewise at the other extreme with z equals zero the curve p zero is merely the single point p zero which must be non-zero because p z is never zero. Thus P zero must be distinct from the origin zero, zero, which denotes zero in the complex plane. The winding number of P zero around the origin zero, zero is thus zero. 
Now changing R continuously will deform the loop continuously. At some R the winding number must change. But that can only happen if the curve P R includes the origin 0, 0 for some R. But then for some Z on that circle, Z, equals R we have P Z equals 0, contradicting our original assumption. Therefore, P Z has at least one zero. Equals Topic Algebraic proofs Equals These proofs use two facts about real numbers that require only a small amount of analysis, more precisely, the intermediate value theorem. Every polynomial with odd degree and real coefficients has some real root. Every non-negative real number has a square root. The second fact, together with the quadratic formula, implies the theorem for real quadratic polynomials. In other words, algebraic proofs of the fundamental theorem actually show that if R is any real closed field, then its extension C equals R square root minus 1 is algebraically closed. As mentioned above, it suffices to check the statement, every non-constant polynomial P Z with real coefficients has a complex root. This statement can be proved by induction on the greatest non-negative integer k such that 2k divides the degree n of p z. Let a be the coefficient of z n in p z and let f be a splitting field of p z over c. In other words, the field f contains c and there are elements z1, z2, z n in f such that p Z equals A Z minus Z one Z minus Z two Z minus Z N Display style P Z equals A Z Z underscore one Z Z underscore two C D O T S Z Z underscore N If K topic zero, then N is odd, and therefore P Z has a real root. Now, suppose that n 2 km with m odd and k greater than 0 and that the theorem is already proved when the degree of the polynomial has the form 2k minus 1 m with m odd. For a real number t, define q t z equals 1 i j n z minus z i minus z j minus t z i z j. Display style q underscore t z equals prod underscore 1 l e q i. Then the coefficients of q t z are symmetric polynomials in the z with real coefficients. Therefore, they can be expressed as polynomials with real coefficients in the elementary symmetric polynomials, that is, in minus a1, a2, minus 1, nan. So q t z has in fact real coefficients. Furthermore, the degree of q t z is n n minus 1, 2 equals 2 k minus 1 meter n minus 1, and m n minus 1 is an odd number. So, using the induction hypothesis, Qt has at least one complex root, in other words, z plus zj plus ziz is complex for two distinct elements i and j from 1, n. Since there are more real numbers than pairs i, j, one can find distinct real numbers t and s such that z plus zj plus ziz and z plus zj plus s z i z j are complex for the same i and j. So, both z plus zj and ziz are complex numbers. 
It is easy to check that every complex number has a complex square root, thus every complex polynomial of degree 2 has a complex root by the quadratic formula. It follows that z and zj are complex numbers, since they are roots of the quadratic polynomial z2 minus z plus zj z plus ziz. Joseph Shipman showed in 2007 that the assumption that odd degree polynomials have roots is stronger than necessary. Any field in which polynomials of prime degree have roots is algebraically closed, so odd can be replaced by odd prime, and furthermore, this holds for fields of all characteristics. For axiomatization of algebraically closed fields, this is the best possible, as there are counterexamples if a single prime is excluded. However, these counterexamples rely on minus 1 having a square root. If we take a field where minus 1 has no square root, and every polynomial of degree n element of i has a root, where i is any fixed infinite set of odd numbers, then every polynomial f x of odd degree has a root since x2 plus 1 k f x has a root, where k is chosen so that deg f plus 2 k element of i. Mohsen Aliabadi generalized Shipman's result for any field in 2013, proving that the sufficient condition for an arbitrary field of any characteristic to be algebraically closed is having a root for any polynomial of prime degree. Another algebraic proof of the fundamental theorem can be given using Galois theory. It suffices to show that C has no proper finite field extension. Let k, c be a finite extension. Since the normal closure of k over r still has a finite degree over c or r, we may assume without loss of generality that k is a normal extension of r hence it is a Galois extension, as every algebraic extension of a field of characteristic zero is separable. Let G be the Galois group of this extension, and let H be a silo 2 subgroup of G, so that the order of H is a power of 2, and the index of H in G is odd. By the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, there exists a subextension L of K, R such that Gal K, L equals H as L, R equals G, H is odd, and there are no nonlinear irreducible real polynomials of odd degree, we must have L equals R, thus K, R and K, C are powers of 2. Assuming by way of contradiction that K, C greater than 1, we conclude that the two-group Gal K, C contains a subgroup of index 2, so there exists a subextension M of C of degree 2. However, C has no extension of degree 2, because every quadratic complex polynomial has a complex root, as mentioned above. This shows that k, c equals 1, and therefore k equals c, which completes the proof. Equals Topic. Geometric proofs Equals there exists still another way to approach the fundamental theorem of algebra, due to J. M. Almira and A. Romero, by Riemannian geometric arguments. The main idea here is to prove that the existence of a non-constant polynomial P Z without zeros implies the existence of a flat Riemannian metric over the sphere S2. This leads to a contradiction, since the sphere is not flat. A Riemannian surface M, G, is said to be flat if its Gaussian curvature, which we denote by kilogram, is identically null. Now, gauss bonnet theorem, when applied to the sphere S2, claims that S 2 K G equals 4 pi 
Display style int underscore math BF S carrot two K underscore G equals four pi which proves that the sphere is not flat. Let us now assume that n greater than zero and p z equals a zero plus a one z plus plus a n z n does not equal zero. Display style p z equals a underscore zero plus a underscore one z plus c d o t s plus a underscore n z caret n n e q zero for each complex number z. Let us define p z equals Z N P one Z equals a zero Z N plus a one Z N minus one plus plus a n display style p caret asterisk z equals z caret n p left t f r a c one z right equals a underscore zero z caret n plus a underscore one z caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore n Obviously, p asterisk z does not equal zero for all z in C. Consider the polynomial f z equals p z p asterisk z. Then f z does not equal zero for each z in C. Furthermore, f one w equals p one W P one W equals W minus two N P W P W equals W minus Two N F W Display style F T F R A C one W equals P left T F R A C one W right P carrot asterisk left T F R A C one W right equals W carrot two N P carrot asterisk W P W equals W carrot two N F W we can use this functional equation to prove that g given by g equals 1 f w 2 n d w 2 Display style g equals frac 1 f w caret frac 2 n d w caret 2 for w in c and g equals 1 f 1 w 2 n d one W two 
display style g equals frac 1 left f left t frac 1 w right right caret frac 2 n left d left t frac 1 w right right caret 2 for W element of S2 0 is a well defined Riemannian metric over the sphere S2 which we identify with the extended complex plane C infinity Now a simple computation shows that W element of C 1 f W 1 N K G equals one N Delta log F W equals one N Delta Re log F W equals zero. Display style for all W in Math BF C Q quad FRAC one F W carrot FRAC one N K underscore G equals FRAC one N delta log F W equals FRAC one N delta text re log F W equals zero since the real part of an analytic function is harmonic this proves that kilogram equals 0 equals topic corollaries equals since the fundamental theorem of algebra can be seen as the statement that the field of complex numbers is algebraically closed it follows that any theorem concerning algebraically closed fields applies to the field of complex numbers here are a few more consequences of the theorem, which are either about the field of real numbers or about the relationship between the field of real numbers and the field of complex numbers. The field of complex numbers is the algebraic closure of the field of real numbers. Every polynomial in one variable z with complex coefficients is the product of a complex constant and polynomials of the form z plus a with a complex. Every polynomial in one one variable x with real coefficients can be uniquely written as the product of a constant, polynomials of the form x plus a with a real, and polynomials of the form x2 plus x plus b with a and b real and a2 minus 4b. <laughs> Bounds on the zeros of a polynomial While the fundamental theorem of algebra states a general existence result, it is of some interest, both from the theoretical and from the practical point of view, to have information on the location of the zeros of a given polynomial. The simpler result in this direction is a bound on the modulus, all zeros z of a monic polynomial z n plus a n minus one z n minus one plus plus a one z plus a zero Display style z caret n plus a underscore n one z caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore one z plus a underscore zero satisfy an inequality zeta r infinity where r infinity equals one plus max Zero A N minus one 
Display style R underscore in A T equals one plus max a underscore zero L dots a underscore N one Notice that, as stated, this is not yet an existence result but rather an example of what is called an a priori bound. It says that if there are solutions then they lie inside the closed disk of center the origin and radius r infinity. However, once coupled with the fundamental theorem of algebra it says that the disk contains in fact at least one solution. More generally, a bound can be given directly in terms of any p norm of the n vector of coefficients. A equals a zero a one a n minus one. Display style a equals a underscore zero a underscore one l dots a underscore n one. That is zeta r p, where r p is precisely the q norm of the two vector one a p. Display style one a underscore p. Q being the conjugate exponent of p. One P plus one Q equals one Display style TFRAC one P plus TFRAC one Q equals one for any one P infinity. Thus, the modulus of any solution is also bounded by R1, equals max 1, 0 k n, a k, display style R underscore 1, equals max left 1, sum underscore 0 l e q k r p, equals 1 plus 0 k n, a k, p q p 1 q, display style R underscore p, equals left 1 plus left sum underscore Score zero L E Q K for one R two equals zero K N A K two Display style R underscore two equals S Q R T sum underscore zero L E Q K L E Q N A underscore K carrot two where we define n to mean 1, which is reasonable since 1 is indeed the nth coefficient of our polynomial. The case of a generic polynomial of degree n p z equals a n z n plus a n minus 1 z n minus 1 plus plus a 1 z plus a 0 Display style p z equals a underscore n z caret n plus a underscore n one z caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore one z plus a underscore zero is of course reduced to the case of a monic dividing all coefficients by and does not equal zero. Also, in case that zero is not a root, i.e. A0 does not equal 0, bounds from below on the roots zeta follow immediately as bounds from above on 1 zeta display style tfrac 1 zeta that is the roots of a 0 z n plus a 1 z n minus 1 
plus plus a n minus 1 z plus a n Display style a underscore zero z caret n plus a underscore one z caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore n one z plus a underscore n. Finally, the distance zeta minus zeta zero. Display style zeta zeta underscore zero from the roots zeta to any point zeta zero display style zeta underscore zero can be estimated from below and above, seeing zeta minus zeta zero. Display style zeta zeta underscore zero as zeros of the polynomial p z plus zeta zero display style p z plus zeta underscore zero whose coefficients are the Taylor expansion of p z at Z equals zeta zero. Display style z equals zeta underscore zero. Let zeta be a root of the polynomial z n plus a n minus one z n minus 1 plus plus a 1 z plus a 0 Display style z caret n plus a underscore n one z caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore one z plus a underscore zero. In order to prove the inequality zeta r p, we can assume, of course, zeta greater than one. Writing the equation as minus zeta n equals a n minus 1 zeta n minus 1 plus plus a 1 zeta plus a 0 Display style zeta caret n equals a underscore n one zeta caret n one plus c d o t s plus a underscore one zeta plus a underscore zero, and using the Holder's inequality, we find zeta n a p zeta n minus one zeta one q display style zeta caret n l e q a underscore p left left zeta caret n one l dots zeta one right right underscore q. Now, if p equals one, this is zeta n a one max zeta n minus one zeta one equals a one zeta n minus 
one Display style zeta carrot n l e q a underscore one max left zeta carrot n one l dots zeta one right equals a underscore one zeta carrot n one. Thus, zeta max one a one. Display style zeta l e q max one a underscore one. In the case one zeta n a p zeta q n minus one plus plus zeta q plus one one q equals a p zeta q n minus one zeta q minus one one Q a p zeta q n zeta q minus one one q Display style zeta carrot n l e q a underscore p left zeta carrot q n one plus c d o t s plus zeta carrot q plus one right carrot f r a c one q equals a underscore p left f r a c zeta carrot q n minus one zeta carrot q minus one right carrot f r a c C one Q L E Q a underscore P left FRAC Zeta carrot Q N Zeta carrot Q minus one right carrot FRAC one Q Thus Zeta N Q a P Q Zeta Q N Zeta Q minus one Display style Zeta carrot N Q L E Q a underscore P carrot Q F R A C Zeta carrot Q N Zeta carrot Q minus one and simplifying Zeta Q one plus a p q display style zeta caret q l e q one plus a underscore p caret q. Therefore, zeta one a p q equals R P display style zeta l e q left left one a underscore p right right underscore q equals r underscore p holds for all one p 